Uh, in, uh, in Italy, we, where we have set up uh, the first uh, private credit bureau in Italy and I think one of the first uh, in continental Europe 30 years ago. So uh, from that time, uh, a lot of things happened. Uh, now we are a company working in four continents, uh, around 50 countries, more or less uh, 600 uh, million euro of turnover, I think more than 5,000 people. Uh, let's say our story started with the Bureau and we are still working on uh, uh, credit information industry. We manage uh, or directly or our uh, technological partner 23 or 24, I think, uh, credit Bureau. I think that the last one was that we are implementing is uh, Madagascar, yes. And this is still our uh, one of the, our uh, main uh, business. But also we expanded from Italy. First of all, we went to Europe, we went to the US. And in the last seven, eight years, we have started to come in Middle East and Asia. And today, Middle East and Asia is our main focus. We mostly, 85% of our investment are in this region. We started from uh, Dubai, India, but now we are basically in uh, Egypt, uh, Jordan, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, uh, GCC, India, most of the ASEAN countries, so Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, uh, Cambodia, Singapore, etc. And China also, that is a uh, very completely different uh, business. So we have expanded geographically. Uh, from a business point of view, Credit Bureau is very important, but as you know, <laughs> it is not only uh, the only way to evaluate customers. And so we decided to expand in other sources of data. So financial information and any information to evaluate uh, uh, business, commercial business, from large corporate to SME. In Europe, for example, we are one of the credit rating agency certified to do this work. But in all Asia, I think today, by far, we are the player that has more information to evaluate companies, because we collect the data in different way, and it's a difficult business but from basically all the country in uh, the region. But this is not uh, also enough. We know that, uh, uh, in, let's say, in all the country, but especially Asia, Middle East, Africa, the um, financial inclusion is one of the biggest topics. So how to make more people to be banked, to receive a loan, to be evaluated. So we started years ago to evaluate uh, and collect the data that are, we call alternative data. I think later Lawrence will speak uh, a little bit about uh, what does it mean alternative data, what kind of uh, approaches we can uh, build up, uh, not only to evaluate credit, but also to uh, evaluate in general customer behavior for also business development, not only for uh, credit management. And obviously, we integrate all this kind of data with processes. So we have a big team in Europe and now in Asia, based out of Dubai, Singapore, and India for the moment, uh, to uh, take care of risk management consulting, uh, artificial intelligence, regulatory uh, risk management, uh, and in general to support with technology analytics uh, and uh, know-how uh, all the player to improve. Uh, what about uh, Karachi and Pakistan? So let's say I moved to Dubai a little bit more than three years uh, ago. So we settled in the region and we are now one of the biggest players in the region. Pakistan was missing in the past in, uh, on our strategy and uh, clearly cannot be because uh, it's one of the most interesting country in terms of population, in terms of growth, in terms of know-how also. So we are, we are here not only for this conference but also to recruit people. We have planned uh, to open an office very soon. And so investment uh, in uh, uh, Pakistan has been decided. We are committed to do that. We have some deals coming in the next week, let's say. 
And so we are fully committed to invest uh, in uh, Pakistan and stay for a long time, like also is, uh, let's say, the approach of CRIF. Because another thing is that CRIF uh, is uh, still owned by one guy that is investing with very long term uh, strategy, and so uh, we are committing the, in the region. So I stop here as an introduction. We have um, a day with a few hours with a lot of topics, let's say, that obviously we can only touch because we go from regulatory compliance to alternative data and marketing uh, technology from our experience from our partners. We have some of our partners from uh, GCC here. But uh, like I said, I would like that uh, beside this highlight that my colleague and partner will give you, please keep the discussion open. Anything that you, you want to highlight, discuss, uh, let's go. Uh, I invite uh, Larry, that is uh, our uh, uh, responsible of alternative data and uh, new kind of approach to evaluate uh, technology to, let's say, chair the discussion. Please, Lawrence. Okay, welcome, welcome to you, um, Some house rules. The um, mobile phones don't have to be off, but if you speak, maybe outside is better. Um, refreshments, I think, are going to be available on an ad hoc basis, so feel free to, to use. In the bags that you have, there's a, a schedule of the speeches that we have, so you can follow them. Um, I'm going to introduce them, so I'll be coming on to introduce the different people. Like Rivaldo said, we have many different topics that we're going to be talking about. Um, some covering regulatory, some of them from our partners in the region. So we have representatives from credit bureaus in UAE, uh, Saudi Arabia. We have um, some local specialists from Karim. Um, I'm going to be speaking on alternative data. And then at the end, we have a very exciting demonstration uh, regarding a uh, new reporting tool which uh, we've developed and have used. So it's a live demonstration. Hopefully that will work. Um, so bear with us on the technology front. Now, uh, MacBook. Okay. So for the first presentation, I'm going to introduce um, Luca Calcone. Luca is um, a uh, SVP for the consultative department. Uh, heads up a team in Dubai, looking after the region. He's based in Dubai, um, from Italy originally. A wealth of experience and knowledge. So. Anything that you don't learn from the slides, I'm sure he'll be happy to speak to you afterwards uh, and give you some full attention afterwards if you want to grab him. Keep the questions open at the end, uh, and we'll, we'll come around maybe with a microphone and we can start to be more interactive at the end of the presentation. Luca Kakon. Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> All right, so. Let me start from uh, a brief introduction of uh, what we do, okay, what are our specialities, what is our DNA, key DNA. Bardo Lawrence already introduced some of the uh, key areas we focused on. So starting from data, uh, we are strong believers in the value of data first. So our 30 years experience tells us that all organizations who faced uh, uh, the aspect of our technology to retrieve data, store data, and use data in the processes now are leading the market. So this is pillar number one. Uh, pillar number two is analytics. So data by themselves don't speak. So analytics is the language we need to, to translate data into. And only from analytics we can uh, uh, get insights and transform uh, processes in, uh, across the lending process in, in the banks. Uh, and third is, is uh, solutions. So only the integration of uh, data and analytics into uh, cutting edge technology can uh, enable uh, lenders and organizations to uh, put in place and roll out um, data driven processes. So this is what we do in essence. Starting from the evolution roadmap in terms of uh, sophistication levels, levels that different uh, uh, organizations are facing today. Starting from the this 
Okay, so starting from the uh, most basic approach to the most advanced, uh, in this chart I want to present just the, what is the uh, revolutionary roadmap. So increase the complexity, of course, means uh, the increase of, uh, of business benefit. Starting from the first, uh, the first box, uh, adoption of strict policy rules is what some lenders, uh, lenders start doing uh, some, some years back, some are still doing this. Uh, so this is the very first move from a manual process into uh, an operation and a decision driven by strict policy rules. I will articulate a bit more on each of them in the following slides, but just to give an idea of what is the evolution of our time. Uh, the second step in the evolution is the adoption of scorecards, typically generic or judgmental scorecards. Uh, some lenders in uh, some less mature market are still there. Uh, and when this happens, typically the focus is on originations, not on the other uh, phases of the customer life cycle. So origination only and uh, uh, expert-driven scorecard from uh, uh, industry uh, expert providers. Uh, the third step is bespoke, the development of bespoke scorecards. So whenever data are made available, uh, scorecards uh, are developed and some countries, in some organizations are facing this now. Um, some organizations are now rolling from the development of these bespoke scorecards into the utilization of these models into their processes. So this is most organizations globally, let me say, still are. Okay, so the usage of a scorecard to, uh, to affect their lending processes and customer management processes. Some lenders moved into adoption of Champion Challenger, which is most, more advanced, more sophisticated. To my knowledge and to our experience, this is still ready adopted. It's a technology which is there, has been out for years, but few organizations today use this kind of technology to improve their knowledge curve uh, while uh, adopting data driven strategies. And the last one is optimization, leveraging operational reserves or artificial intelligence. So the initial steps from some disruptors uh, company. So start from adoption of strict policy rules. There are pros and cons in, uh, in these approaches. Starting from the pros, uh, data analysis uh, is needed to derive these rules. So this is a, a good thing. Even to implement such an approach, organizations need to put in place some analytics. Uh, it brings to a consistent and partially automated approach. Uh, and, and brings risk under control to some extent. What are the cons? The cons is that usually all of this is system hard-coded, so lack of flexibility in, uh, uh, in, in the changes of uh, the policy rules. It's usually too conservative because the adoption of policy rules in sync brings to uh, a rigid trade, talking about origination, which is usually uh, too conservative to our experience. Uh, and also it's difficult to, to measure the predict predictive power of these policy rules because typically being strict, you don't have any rejected, you don't have any accept uh, account to measure the uh, capability of these uh, variables of policy rules to, to predict the future. So high level, this is the pros and cons. Uh, adoption of scorecards, so judgmental scorecards, uh, the process that in, uh, implies the improvement of data capture, so that even if it, the scorecard development is not a statistical one, it's purely judgmental, this will uh, force organizations to, to capture data in a more consistent and better quality fashion. Uh, it also allows to relax some of the policy rules, so as I was saying before, this can, policy rules, if applied strictly, can bring to a too conservative approach. In the, the implementation adoption of a uh, scorecard can relax some of these policy rules uh, and also increase awareness in the tools. So scorecard scoring will be uh, one of the tools which will be more um, well known within the, within the company. The cause is that usually behavioral collection models are not covered, so it's very hard to, to develop a, a judgmental behavioral customer management or collection models. Uh, this, the, the power of this model, the discriminatory power, is suboptimal. Uh, and also local factors are quite difficult to embed. So typically the best practice approach is very rarely, is, is quite hard to uh, inject some local uh, factors into this model. <laughs> 
When we spoke of uh, development of this post scorecard, of course it implies deep, deep data analysis, which is a pro to me. So this will uh, uh, socialize all the benefits and the outcome from, from analysis within, within the bank. Uh, the back testing of the models will uh, increase the confidence within the organization, because this will prove how the model can be affected when put into operation. And of course, compared to the uh, judgmental scorecard, the predictive power is, is higher. Uh, the con is, is not a con, it's more a limitation than a con, is that good, good quality data is needed in order to embark this kind of project. The redesign of workflows uh, to drive decisions based on scoring, this is very important. So, uh, focus uh, the, the pro of uh, using scoring to uh, take decisions across the whole life cycle of the, of the credit is to focus effort, for example, on more complex application, in essence automations. So whenever you take a decision based on scoring, uh, you can focus the attention of the underwriters, in the, in the example of origination, just on the most critical applications, where the risk detection is more difficult to be, to be done automatically. Uh, all processes will be streamlined because most of the decisions will be taken based on the scoring, and also will, this will increase the customer satisfaction because the streamline of the process, of course, will bring to a shorter time to, to disperse uh, One of the uh, cons, again, more a limitation than a con, is that sometimes uh, this approach meets the resistance in adoption uh, within the bank. So typically the network or even the, uh, at HQ level, uh, it's not always easy to penetrate and uh, adopt this, uh, this approach uh, in, a, in, a strict, in a strict way. So some education internal and especially with uh, the network branch at branch level has to be done in order to uh, create awareness and uh, let everyone understand the power of such an approach. The adoption of Champion Challenger, as I was saying, is still quite rarely uh, adopted, uh, but it's an extremely powerful tool. Very, very powerful. Why? Uh, because it is the tool which allows to measure in an objective way uh, the effectiveness of alternative strategies. So we have, we have seen a few examples, fortunately. So the adoption of a different level of automation. So where to set the cutoff uh, to accept or reject automatically. You can try alternative approaches and uh, create a referral area which is either very small or bigger and then you can measure rolling out both of these strategies in parallel, which is the best of the two approach. And you can empirically measure which of the two brought to a better result to your bottom line. Uh, also, this approach uh, allows a continuous improvement. So it's an accelerator of the learning curve because the evidence of the outcome and the comparison of alternative strategies is a, brings to a clear indication of which uh, path you need to follow to improve your uh, decision process. One of the limitations of the difficulties here in this case, more than a limitation, is the classification of alternative strategies in case of conflicting KPIs. So it is not good to focus only on one KPI, such as the reduction of bad rate. This is just one of the uh, angles you should cover. Uh, simultaneously, you, you should also keep an eye, for example, on the increase of the business, the increase of utilization of credit lines. So somehow uh, move from a purely risk-oriented approach to a more profitable-oriented. And this brings to a, to a need of co uh, considering more than one single KPI simultaneously to assess which was the best strategy to be deployed. <coughs> and of course, proper tools are needed. So only some specific, uh, very, <coughs> very specific uh, decision engines can use this type of technologies. This is not something which typically comes out of the box from a core banking system, just to be clear. Optimization and uh, operational research, uh, artificial intelligence techniques, uh, we are still in <coughs> seminar phase, okay, so we have uh, seen a few examples in, our, in, uh, in a few projects. Uh, as of today, we can say that there is an increment in terms of uh, accuracy and performance, but it's quite marginal, so we don't still see the, uh, a big added value from, from this approach. Uh, what will happen probably is that uh, only when more data will be available and such, such techniques will be uh, a better fit to, to manage this data, this is when we will uh, have an uplift in terms of uh, performance. 
So I think that the data which Larry will talk about will also give you the context on where this kind of uh, approaches is, uh, is to be preferred. Okay, said so that. Mm. The users of scoring and automation in, uh, has to be, can and should be applied across uh, all phases of, of client relationship. So we have a few examples. So initiate is what is typical called application or origination. And, and the actions, as you, as you can see, across the different uh, stages of life cycle are totally different. So the same tool, which is core, which predicts more or less the same thing, so bad debt or risk, sometimes classified in, with slightly different uh, nuances, but in essence risk, can lead to very different decisions. So in case of origination, of course, what you can leverage is a decision in, in the accept or reject, or the determination of uh, terms and conditions. So scoring can be one of the inputs, for example, for risk based pricing or determination of the duration of a loan. But that's it. Okay? This, this is what you can decide at the origination point. The goal, of course, is to onboard business uh,